continuing with the reassembly um, put the stud bolts back into the hub um, two of them had remained on the tractor because they were their removal was blocked by the wheel weight but anyways I'm gonna try the zerk fitting now to see how that works okay so the new zerk fitting um, is working so I'm able to pump grease straight into the bearing chamber which uh, means that in the future when I have to lubricate the bearings I will not have to pull the axle out of the tractor I can just do it from the zerk fitting that I drilled into the bearing housing so it's time to begin reassembling the components back to the tractor itself um, as you can see I've coated everything with some paint to clean things up first thing is there's a couple of shims that make sure the axle when it enters the uh, rear end touches just touches the other opposing axle and um, so since the bearing and collar wound up in the same spot the two shims that were there should be all that's needed next on is the for lack of a better term I guess the brake shoe mounting plate I don't know what the proper term is but there it is in place now we'll get the axle and hub so there's the axle in place along with the hub you can see the zerk fitting and just have a few more like one more bolt to put in but it's um, axles back on the tractor so after I finish this up then the next thing will be to get back on the actual rim replacement of the wheel which is where we started this project in the process of reassembling the axle to the tractor each one of those surfaces that is the um, axle housing and the shims and the brake mounting plate and the hub all got a coat of this uh, gasket gasketing material which is a non silicone based gasket so that once it's compressed it retains that dimension um, those surfaces were all coated so that uh, two reasons Hi so hydraulic fluid won't leak out past any of those seams plus water won't get into the um, axle housing either so here is the uh, new brake pads installed these are standard drum brakes with a top spring and the adjuster and then the two other springs that hold the shoes in place um, I did not film the removal or replacement because it's standard drum brakes you can look at that anywhere else online just like an automobile you will need a a drum brake uh, tool for removing the springs and reinstalling them if you don't have one of those I suggest you get one because it's really hard to do otherwise now we'll go on to the uh, tire rim project to get the tire off the old rim and get the get the tire on the new rim so the first thing I'm doing as far as the wheel rim replacement goes is cutting through the old nuts that hold the bolts hold the rim to the hub the rim is what's getting discarded I'm going to try to reuse the hub even though one of the mounting positions is completely gone I'll have to cut that away and weld a new flange on um, so I'm using a you know four and a half inch angle grinder with a cutoff wheel I'm not trying to save the bolts or nuts because I bought new ones 
here's the hub out of the rim uh, I did have to cut through the bolts there's a lot of rust holding everything together you can see that one flange that's going to have to be replaced and re-welded the reason I took the hub out is because I let the tire go down on the ground to drain but I think the valve probably uh, clogged and didn't drain all the way because I couldn't no longer lift the tire um, so I'm going to see if breaking the valve off gets it to drain more because it seems to be too heavy for me to manage right now. Yeah, so I was correct. The valve stem had, got, had gotten clogged, so I'm still loaded with calcium chloride. So I just cut through the valve stem and trying to get the uh, liquid out of there so I can actually lift the tire because it was too heavy for me to lift. I was trying to break the bead and it seemed like it was holding pressure and wasn't giving in to me and that's because it was still holding pressure so I gotta let this drain a while.